there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game with a review of Rockopolis by Minus Games. So what is Rockopolis? Well let's take a look at the box. There is no box. Hmm. Well that's because this is another Kickstarter prototype. What they have sent though is an image of the box artwork. Um, that still doesn't actually help us much, it just tells us the name of the game. So what is Rockopolis? Well, it is a worker placement game where you are each a band leader trying to build up your band, get them the best equipment, train them all up in order to be able to be the first to record a successful demo record. Once you've done that, you've won the game. So why don't we take it to the table to show you how this actually works. In Rockopolis, you're trying to be the first to successfully record a demo, which means you need to go to this location here. But more than just going to that location, first, you can only go there once you've got your prestige up. And your prestige is on your player board here in the green. You can only go once you've got 25 prestige. So obviously it's going to take you a while to get there, but even once you've got that 25 prestige, you then still need to be able to successfully complete the challenge. And the way you do the challenge is you will roll a dice. You will add to that dice your band value. So at the moment, this band here has a value of 11 and you need to beat 25. And I rolled a one, which would be an automatic failure anyway in this. So even if you've got a really high band value, up to say, I had 30 band value, I can't possibly fail. No, I rolled a 1, I failed. So you can see there, we've got the 1. So how do you actually get to a position where you can do this then? Well, you take turns placing your pawn each round on one of the locations. So here we have the pub. When you go to the pub, you get to look at some cards. You get to look at free cards, in fact. You'll look at these and you'll keep one. And there are lots of different things in here. You can see we've got some event cards here that do all sorts of different things. But what you're probably looking for most is new band members. So here we can see we have some new band members that we can then put into our band, increasing our band level by the number on that band member. So you'll take time building up your band to build up your band level. But whenever you go to the pub, you'll lose synergy, which is the purple track here. And your synergy, as it goes down, reduces your band level. So how do we deal with that? Well. That's where this space comes in, the rehearsal rooms. So there's actually two spaces here, and when you go there, you will roll a dice. Whatever that dice comes out, you'll compare to the table on here, and that'll tell you how much synergy you gained within your band for practicing. But I've missed one of the spaces here. You could put your pawn on the shop, and this works just the same as the pub does. You take free cards, and you get to keep one. Now, again, this is filled with these event cards that do all sorts of things, but it's also then filled with these equipment cards that you can equip onto your band as a whole or onto specific members of your band to give them a boost, which will increase, you guessed it, your band value. So all the time you're going to these locations, you're building up your band value and building up your synergy, which is going down every time you go to the shop or the pub. So that's getting your band level up ready to take on this demo recording. But how do you get your prestige up? Well, that's where the live location comes in. So when you go to the live location, you don't actually go to the hard cardboard here. You actually go to a card and there'll be a number of cards out equal to the number of players minus one. So in this two player setup here, we have one card out. And when you go to a live gig, you are putting on a show. And this works much like recording a demo. You'll roll a dice, you'll add your band level, and if you beat the difficulty stated on the card, you gain prestige as stated on the card. And even if you fail, you'll gain some prestige. There's a lower number for if you fail, a higher number for if you succeed. So there's a balance of building up your 
band value and also building up your prestige until eventually you're able to place your pawn on the six spot, the six action spot and record a demo. Now, if you fail, play just carries on as normal. If you succeed, you've won the game and it ends immediately. Okay, so that is how Rockopolis actually works. What do I think of it? Well, we'll start with the artwork. It's a very stylized artwork. You know, you've got like these pub card art there. And then of course you've got like the drama there. You know, you have all of this artwork. It's all that same sort of style. It is very much stylized and I'm not keen on it. It's not that it's bad exactly, it's just very much this cartoon style. It reminds me of the sort of thing you get in newspapers back in the 80s in the UK. Um, yeah, not overly kind of keen on it, it doesn't really do it for me. And then graphic design wise, you've got these player boards. They're hideous. Um, just all these colours that just don't feel like they work very well together. Functionally, it does an okay job, although it feels like these tracks need to be managed some way better because the current system of using these temporary pawns, they slide around, they get knocked around, doesn't work ideally. But that brings us to components, really, and these aren't the final components, so I can't really comment on that. As I say, artwork not to my taste, though. What about the gameplay? What do I think of this game? Well, it's a worker placement game where you only ever have one worker. There's no way to gain any other workers. And it's extremely light because of that. You, you've always got the same number of spaces available, but you've only got one worker. So yes, you've got to decide each term where you're gonna place that worker, but there really aren't that many options. I mean, you can rule out the demo recording until you're ready to do that. And that just leaves you with these five. And if you're doing a two player game, the rehearsal rooms okay is two, but the live is still only one. So yeah, that's five options. Um, if you go with more players, you've got slightly more options because you end up with more live record, live shows going on that you could partake in, or live venues, I suppose you're choosing. But yeah, that's not a lot of options. It's not a lot of choice. And you don't really get a lot of blocking going on. You know, they might block the pub. So you go to the shop, the shop and the pub are blocked, so you rehearse. And you're never going to have all the rehearsal rooms, the shop and the pub blocked. So you're never really going to think, oh, there's nothing useful I can do. And the most useful things is always the pub and the shop. And so it tends to play that every round the shop goes or the pub goes and then the shop goes or the pub goes afterwards. You know, it's always those two. That is until about mid-game. Once everyone has got their band built up and, you know, they're geared up, they're ready to go, they're rocked. You know, they've got their prestige low, but their band value is up there. Then the game suddenly twists, rather than it just being everyone going to the shop and the pub and rehearsing. Suddenly, everyone's just rehearsing and going live shows. But it's still, it's that same, there's no real feel for, oh, I'm blocked from that, there's, that's the only thing I needed to do, I needed to do that to build up my tableau. You don't really get that feeling, it's just, oh, that one's blocked, well, I can go do this one. Which is good, if you want that lighter game. If you're used to heavy worker placements where it's, ah, oh, but I need this money to be able to do this, to be able to do that, or I need this wood to be able to build this, then you're going to be disappointed with this because it really doesn't give you that. It is just, well, this round I get to go to the shop. This round I get to go to the pub. Oh, well, they're out of the round this time. Well, I rehearse. And then later on you're just doing the live and it is just a bit of a race and it can be a very luck heavy race. And that again keys into the lightness of this. This is very much a light gateway game. It's not a heavy game, there's a huge amount of luck, and I'll tell you why. Firstly, you've got the luck when you go to the sh pub. What do you get? Oh, you get a load of people that give you minus score because of who your leader is, or because of who you've already got in your band, or, ah, oh, one person goes and they get five star people, you go and you get three star people, or you go and you get nothing but events. 
very luck heavy in that respect. Someone can go and get just what they need, other people not. And there's a lot of cards there, so there's a lot of variation in whether you're not, or you will get what you need. And then you get the same on the shop, when you go to the shop. Luck of the draw on the cards. So, you know, you've made this choice. Yeah, I'm going to go there. I want to get some items that are useful. Or I want to go to the pub and get someone that's useful into my band. Oh, a bit of a wasted turn because there was nothing useful there. And there's no way to really mitigate that luck. And this doesn't even stop there with the cards. Because you then move on to rehearsing. And it becomes luck of the dice. You know, someone rolls a six and moves four spaces along on their rehearsal. Now they don't need to rehearse for several rounds. And you rolled a two and moved one. Okay, some of the events will help you mitigate the luck of the dice. Slightly. Ever so slightly. Really doesn't make a big deal. So again, you've got this luck-heavy thing there that you're not really able to change or do anything about. But, you know, if you want that level of game, if you want that sort of, if you want a incredibly light intro worker placement, that's maybe where you want to be coming into this from. But that, you know, that's all the luck stuff out of the way. What else is there to say about this? Well, it's dripping with theme. It really is. You know, from the live cards, you know, the names of these, the artwork is all working together with that theme, you know, and then you've got those shows you feel like you're putting on that. You can be like, no, I'm a punk band. I'm only having punk members. And that you can get into that feel of theme of the game. And it does feel like, yeah, let's go down the pub and recruit a new member. But then you have these tracks, and they, those kind of detract from the theme somewhat. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's a nice, interesting game. If you want an incredibly light worker placement game with a band-building theme, then check out Rockopolis. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing them with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.